All right. Okay. Well, you normally say third time's a charm. I think this time it's 100 times is a charm. My apologies, everyone. Definitely uh, not a good use of your time, but we're going to turn that around and make this a really good use of your time. Excellent. So I'll do my quick normal welcome to everyone to this uh, our webinar series, um, which today is all about event content management, our area of expertise. Um, talking to you today is Allie Magyar, CEO of Hub. She's an entrepreneur and event management expert with over 15 years of experience leading companies and planning events for companies around the world. So just our few usual housekeeping items. We are recording this and the recording and slides will be made available within a few days and everyone will be muted, but feel free to um, send any questions through the GoToMeeting questions app. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Ellie. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Really appreciate you being here today and apologies for the slow start. Um, technology can be our friend and our worst enemy. And today it definitely was our worst enemy. <laughs> so but today we're going to talk about an intro to content management and then also talk about some tools and some best practices and how you can achieve the nirvana you're looking for. Um, and so I thought I would share a little bit about my background and my story about how I learned uh, to love event content management. Um, so one of the things that I have always loved um, <laughs> throughout my life has been the meetings industry. And I started in the meetings industry when I was 18 years old. Hard to believe that that is about half my life currently. Um, and so uh, what I ended up doing was um, one night I was managing an event for, I know, can you switch it over for me? Okay, guys, we're still having technical difficulties. So hold on one second. Um, let's do that. All right, now you can see correctly. Let's see how many more tech things we can come up with today. All right, <laughs> back to my story. So uh, meetings industry, since the age of 18, I've worked on some of the world's largest corporate um, conferences and trade shows. And I like to tell the story about how one night before a big event with a couple thousand people, I was finally having dinner after weeks and weeks of having my heads down and working crazy long hours. And I felt like everything was in the bag. The next day was going to go off great. And uh, the business owner called me and said, hey, Allie, I know you just left and we've got a really early morning, but uh, guess what? I changed up the entire agenda for tomorrow. So all of our sessions and our speakers, they're going to be in a new order and I've substituted some people. So I'm going to send you over all these emails and these spreadsheets and then I need you to fix it and then have everything ready to go by tomorrow with everything printed. And this was before everyone was using mobile apps. So I ran down to their campus, locked myself inside their building, started going through the massive amount of emails that they were sending over to me, sorting, resorting my spreadsheets, finally got everything ready to go and ready to print. And at two o'clock in the morning, I'm running up and down between levels and uh, fixing the copiers that decided to break because now I couldn't print everything. And so I looked at my colleague and I said, there's got to be a better way to manage our content for events that isn't drowning me in spreadsheets and email every single day. And so that's how I decided uh, to build Hub and how I learned to love event content management tools. And so a lot of times when we talk about event content or content management tools, it can mean a variety of things to a variety of people. It can mean speaker profiles, uh, session abstracts, presentation materials. When you think about uh, the session content of your event, um, that's really your event content. It's what people are coming and attending as a part of their day-to-day -day experience. And event content management tools, some people will hear the phrase CMS for content management system and they'll think of like a website content manager and they'll think, oh, I don't need that. Um, but event content management tools help meeting planners to collect, manage, and market at all that content for their events. And I think that's really important because there's a lot of work that ends up happening on our side of just the emails back and forth, the spreadsheet management, trying to keep the right version control. I know that when I was managing events, you your content touches so many different places. It can touch you know, your website when you're marketing all of your information. It can touch your on-site experiences, whether that's printed or digital signage, whether that's the mobile app. Um, lots of different ways that this content interacts. So streamlining those processes saves us a lot of time and effort and gives us that single source of truth. 
Um, but it also helps our speakers and our track owners or content owners that are working alongside of us to streamline their work too because you think about managing all that content and not only are you as the meeting planner having to go back and forth but think of the work of the session owner and even the speaker who's trying to keep you up to date with their most recent headshot or their most recent certification that they got or your content owner or session owner having to review over the PowerPoint files and going back and forth because the file's too big to email and FTP won't work at someone's job site. So you think about the amount of work, not only for yourself, but for your extended team for managing as well. And then this is a big piece that I think a lot of people forget about, and it's the marketing of the content. It's uh, taking that information, that's our precious gold. So uh, there was a stat that was by Meeting Planners International that talked about how two thirds of attendees chose to register and pay once they see the content, the sessions and the speakers on the website. Because if they're gonna invest in a day or a couple of days to come and take time out and travel to be somewhere, they're gonna wanna ensure that they're going to learn the things Things that are pertinent to them. So you think about the marketing power between being able to show all of the different sessions, being able to filter to be able to see what content that is so that you can get just to their audience or to be able to look at your speech speakers and show your featured speakers and your speaker profiles and link out to their social media. There's so much gold in that marketing that oftentimes gets hidden behind all of the collecting and the managing that we do because we don't have a single source of truth. So content management tools can actually help you not only save time, but also market your event better. So we talked about a couple of these with um, getting to market faster. If you can, you know, if you have an event that's going on at the same time, time as someone else around that same content. If you can get out first, talk about why your content is better. Again, it's all about driving that registration and that value for your attendees. We talked about the single source of truth, but also this is a big one is reducing errors because I think a lot of attendees look at the marketing website and if it's not updated regularly, they feel like they purchased a ticket to something that isn't what they expected. Or, you know, we've all had those speakers that are very, very particular about their bios. So, you know, you may update it and maybe it's updated in one place, but not the other four places. And so one speaker can end up causing you a lot of churn when it comes to making sure that just something as simple as their last name is spelled right or a certification has been added. So reducing errors and having that single source of truth is a really big benefit to that content management tool. The collaboration between the teams we talked about in terms of the extended teams, not only your team, but the session owners and the content owners and the speakers. And then this is one that saved me so many times is easy to make last minute changes. So when you're on site, if you need to change a room or maybe you're going to change a time slot, um, you know, in order to do that, if you've got spreadsheets and email, you have to get a hold of every vendor that needs that information and have them quickly update that. Versus if you're using an event content management tool and you make a change to the room or to the location or the time, it's going to instantly push out through uh, that connection to be able to update that across your mobile app, across your digital signage, across your website, so that no matter where people are looking, they have the most up-to-date information. And that agility, that ability to make decisions last minute and uh, take care of what the event needs, maybe your session has become more popular, so you saw more people add it to the schedule builder, and so now you want to change that room to be in a much larger room, that can have a major impact on the attendee satisfaction of the event. And it also gives you easy access to reporting and analytics so that you're aware of where you stand in your process. You know, in terms of how many sessions have been accepted versus declined or how many are still pending that you need to get back to people on. It allows things that would normally slip through the cracks to rise up to the front because you have visualization and you have reports that allow you to stay on top of your game, but also be able to provide further information to your marketing team or um, to your internal executive team as well. So a couple of things of what to look for in an event content management tool, and I think in tech in general um, is becoming more uh, predominant in our day-to-day -day lives. So a couple of things that uh, I have experienced in my own personal life <clears throat> that I'm sure you have as well, and these are just some ideas, but you're always going to want to look for a tool that will help save you time and market your event better. I think in the marketing world, meeting planners are some of the hardest working bunch I have ever um, been a part of as an organization, and so I think a lot of times people look at us and say, oh, you want a tool to be able to save you time. No, it's okay. You're going to make the event happen no matter 
matter what, you care too much. Um, and I agree, I care too much and I'm gonna make it happen. But I think if I can think of the low hanging fruit, the things that are not only gonna save me time, but also make the event better, give the event better ROI, market the event better. There's a lot of value propositions that you can give that are not just around saving you time, that allows you to convince others that the budget needed is very, very um, adequate for helping across the organization. And so here's a couple of things that can really help you um, that aren't a normal part of our process, but automated workflows. So when I think about my past experience in managing speakers and sessions, what it's done for me is uh, it's freed me up from the what I'll call babysitting or even sometimes I'll call it stalking because I feel like I'm a professional stalker after my career in event management where those automated workflows and notifications can really help you with creating uh, a better workflow. So with your speakers, each week they could get an automated email that says, hey Joe, thanks for turning in your PowerPoint but we noticed that you haven't turned in in um, your speaker profile photo, or you haven't filled in these fields on your profile. So you think about automating that babysitting and that stocking and how much time that takes you because the tool already knows what's filled out and more importantly, they know it by person. A lot of times I would send out BCC emails, which no one paid attention to because it wasn't to them directly and they didn't have an action item that they had to complete. And so uh, doing automated workflows <laughs> allows you to make that personalized. I think a strong partner ecosystem is incredibly important. We've talked about a couple of use cases where having a single source of truth um, allows you to be able to update downstream any of the other technologies that hook into this. And I think this strong partner ecosystem goes across any technology. And there's a lot of resources on the Hub website in terms of us talking about the API economy. And essentially all that means is you know, systems being able to talk together to share data um, to make the process better. So when we say strong partner ecosystem, it just means that as you're being able to update the information inside of your content management tool, you wanna make sure that they have the API and the partners to be able to push that information to so that you're not having to download an Excel report, upload it into your mobile app, upload it to your website, upload it to your digital signage, that that information just flows back and forth. And that's also a part of modern up-to-date technology as well, because uh, there's a lot of event technology that was created quite a while ago um, and doesn't get updated regularly. And if there's one thing that I've learned after being in meetings and events for many years and then moving over to technology is technology changes at a rate of speed that is absolutely insane. So your providers that are providing any of your event technology, you should make sure that you understand how they stay up to date, how they constantly innovate their platform to be able to make processes easier for you and bring more value through the software. Because ultimately you only want to use the software if it brings value to you and your organization. I think the other thing that helps is having an event professional orientation. Um, you know, with meeting planning being one of the top five most stressful jobs in, in the U.S., <laughs> I think that there's a heightened level of um, intense nature around meetings where, you know, if something happens, it's very visible to anyone that's attending attending that event. And so the support level needs to be able to react in a way that they understand the urgency. There needs to be a thoughtfulness about how we interact um, together as a part of the extended vendor team. And there needs to be some best practice sharing, having a real understanding because a software without knowing how to use it um, won't really benefit you if you don't know how to set it up in the best way and how to think about putting your data in the right way. So having that event professional orientation, I think really helps you get the service level that you need. Easy data movement really goes back into that strong partner ecosystem, so being able to move data from one place to another. Uh, same thing with a strong customer success team, having that event professional orientation. The other thing is when we're managing meetings, obviously we have budgets to play into. And so working with an organization that has transparent pricing so that you don't feel that throughout the process that you're either nickeled and dined as you add things on um, or that maybe you thought that you bought one thing and ended up buying something else. So I think working with an organization to understand what would traditionally be called hidden fees or costs.
And then best in breed technology. Um, that's also with the open API. I think what you want to be looking for is there's a lot of all-in-one solutions that are out there. And those may be perfect for your organization. But I would encourage you to look at each part of the process, whereas a company may be really strong in registration, they may not have the understanding of the content management side. And so the tool that they provide for content management could be just a repurposed registration form that doesn't help give you those workflows, that time savers, and help you to market your event better. So I definitely would be uh, encouraging everyone when you're looking for your, your technology tools is just understand what does best in breed mean to you? What are the most important things for you? And when you're evaluating providers, make sure that you're looking for that best in breed that's going to save you the most time. Pretty sure they must have been uh, working on our internet pipes here um, <laughs> while we're presenting this, so apologies that dropped. All right, so as an example of best in breed, um, best in breed event technology built for the API economy, I think you're seeing more and more of this pop up in the event space. So the Event Tech Tribe is a great example of best in breed event technology. This is a group of companies that are all best in craft and essentially focus on their own individual element, but yet have interconnected platforms and executives that believe in how we service our customers. And so, you know, you could go to an all-in-one solution, but instead of doing that, you can go to something like the Event Tech Tribe that has multiple different companies that are all service oriented, have event professional background, and most importantly, believe in the API economy, helping you to save time and complexity and market your event better throughout the entire life cycle. So there are a lot of options out there for you to consider as you think about the different technologies that are available, how they work together with the partner set, and how you as an organization can best benefit. So one of the things that we thought we would do today is do a quick overview of some of the things when we talk about content management, what that can look like um, and what that can feel like. So I, what I'll do is I'll switch over to a quick demo here so that you guys are able to um, see um, Hub in use and how you may be able to use that for your own type of events. So typically a process would start with a um, call for papers um, or a um, call for speakers. So a lot of different ways that attendees um, use, or I'm sorry, organizers use a, a form to collect information. So uh, with Hub, um, I would look for abilities to be able to uh, collect any of your session data. A couple of things that I know are really important to customers that you should be looking for when you think about your content management tools. Um, one of them would be making sure that your brand is front and center. So make sure that any system that you're choosing has the ability to be able to update the header, the footer, the colors, the fonts, to really make sure that that brand awareness is happening across your event. Also make sure that there's flexibility with being able to list content and information, whether that's on your home page and you want to be able to update any of the text at a moment's notice, um, or if you uh, want to be able to change when a deadline is due or when information is due. So in a call for papers, that essentially is just a basic form. You can use um, any type of information to collect that you want set up a password, whatever it is that you want to do on your form, the flexibility should be there to allow you to be able to collect information however you want to collect that. Um, then, oop, okay, let's use a different email address. All right. When you get dropped into the form, um, then essentially you should be able to list out any information that you want. There's a couple tips and tricks that I would suggest for meeting planners to think about as you're going through your call for speakers or call for papers process. One of them would be, uh, um, if you host multiple events for your organization, I would encourage you to think about having a consolidated call for speakers or call for papers, where you're able to collect on one form across all of your events. Um, I think it helps give a portfolio thinking to your events, um, as well as be able to help your speakers streamline their process. 
The other things that I would recommend is um, doing things that help you to market your event better. So whether that is collecting the presenter headshot through the call for speakers or call for papers. This is one of the things that a lot of our um, customers think is the good best practice so that when you are ready to accept and decline the content, that you can actually go live with marketing this information information, including all of your speaker profiles, because they will have provided this information up front to you. I would also make sure that you have conditional questioning so that you can ask a question and dependent on how that question is asked that you're able to ask additional questions or send them down a different path. Because content can be different whether you're collecting that for maybe breakouts, for versus keynotes versus other type of content. So you want to make sure that you have flexibility to be able to create the right type of content for you. Again, another best practice is to really think about how you bucket your content. So if you think about your process as an entire experience, when you're doing this call for speakers or call for presentations, what you wanna think about is what's the next step in the process? So if you have to grade all of this content and you have different committees that grade it, how is it that you chunk that out? Is it by a product? Is it by an audience? Is it by a level of a session? But I would make sure that you have that information being collected across the form so that as you go into your next process with grading, your system should be able to do auto assignments to any of the people that belong to that group. So if I was going to um, collect target audience and that's how people were grading, speakers could come through and say, great, you know, I'm, I want to present to CEOs. And that should automatically be assigned to your graders in that next step of the process so that whoever's in charge of the CEO sessions gets this session to grade. So lots to think about as you're setting up your form, looking for that flexibility um, and creating content that helps you throughout the process. So that's a, a call for speakers and a call for presentations. I think the other thing that's important is then thinking about your next step in that process. Um, if you have, a like we were talking about a grading committee, um, a couple of things when you're thinking about the vendor that you want to select. So this is a, a dashboard view. We know that things change all the time. So you want to use a system or a platform that allows you as the administrator at two o'clock in the morning, like my stories typically happen, to be able to come and fill out any of this information. Maybe you wanna change the grading key so that it's one through six instead of one through five. Or maybe you wanna change some of the deadline dates. Make sure that you're partnering with a vendor that has quick and easy access to be able to update that information yourself um, instead of having to go to them for those things. And then from a grading process, I think there's a lot of things that you can suggest as a best practice, but uh, one of the things that Hub just recently came out with that I think is really helping our graders to be more efficient is making sure that they have a mobile view to be able to grade from. So not everyone is going to be sitting in, um, you know, at a computer all day long. And so making it easy for them to be able to participate, grade, submit, regardless of the platform or the device that they're on. I would also make sure that your system and tools has easy filters or easy capabilities to get to the content that you want. If you're grading across multiple things, you want to be able to filter down and say, great, right now I only want to be looking at content that's, you know, for event agencies or whatever filters it is that you want to use to go across to make your information and grading process easy for your graders. So in the content here, if you're your graders, there's lots of different things that you could uh, look at. So you've got your rating questions. So the other thing that I would say is use a tool that is flexible on the type of questions that you are asking. Um, you want to do numerical, you want to do text boxes. Use a system and a tool that allows you to customize the grading in a way that's beneficial for your organization. And if there's one thing that I've learned about now doing event technology for over 100 organizations, it is unique and dif different. And so flexibility in the tools that you select are incredibly important to be able to fit within your own process. So those are a couple of, of suggestions when you're thinking through grading. Um, the other thing that I would suggest too is make sure that it, not only do you have the normal Excel reports, but also see if you can get visualized data. So I don't know about you guys, but for me, 
um, you know, I only want to look at this track, and I can come in and I can see the average score visually. I can see how many pe uh, people have graded this that have been assigned to grade it, how many more need to do that. Um, this gives me an easy view to be able to say, great, I'm definitely going to accept this five. Um, you know, some of these other ones that haven't been graded, I need to send out some reminders, and then be able to take action straight from there. So I would definitely recommend finding a tool and a system that has some data visualization, not only for you to be able to take action from, but also for you to be able to see where you are in your process. So when you think about being able to visualize um, your session status. So what percentage of your sessions are accepted versus pending or declined? Or you know what tracks are represented the most? Or being able to see who's uploaded their session resources. Have they been approved or are they pending? How many of them been, have been published to the attendees? There's multiple different ways that you can use data visualization to be able to dive down and be able to see the data that only pertains to this, the subject that you're looking for that makes your job so much easier. So once you get into that grading session and then you're able to be able to accept and decline, again, you want to be able to do everything yourself. So you want to be able to generate the invitations to all of your speakers. And you also want to be able to customize those emails too. So I would again look for a system that has flexibility to be able to customize the emails that you want to send out. I know one of the things that always worries me when I'm using technology is, okay, can I send a test? Can I preview the email? I want to have a lot of safeguards built in that help me feel safe and secure with the actions that I'm doing. Um, a friend of mine always, when she has something big to do like this, she'll always get it organized and then she'll go outside, she'll walk around the block really quick and then come back in. <laughs> and so having some safeguards uh, that allow you to know that you're taking the right steps and are able to see what's going to happen is very important in your tool set. From a speaker perspective, you want to make that very easy for your speakers. So similar to what I was talking about with having dashboards, having all your information in one place, make sure that your system of, that you're choosing for your content management can upload resources so that they could get things like their speaker presentation template or uh, links off to different demos that you want to give to them. Make sure that you make it super easy for your speakers so that this is their single source of truth at any one given time. I would also look for organizations that are looking on how to streamline things like speaker agreements. We completed an integration with DocuSign that several of our customers have been using that allows them to integrate DocuSign with speaker agreements prior to logging into Hub as the content management platform. So a lot of easy ways of integrating into your existing MarkTech um, and being able to streamline those processes. And from a speaker standpoint, um, one of the things, again, going back to that babysitting and that stalking thing that I was talking about before, speakers never want to show up uh, when they are supposed to, and they always claim that they don't know where they're supposed to be. So make sure that your speaker portal will show them all of the data, but also consider giving them their own schedule. So here I can see I'm presenting at these two sessions, I can see the date, time, and room, and I can choose to export my calendar um, so that I can save this to whatever mail client I'm using. Maybe it's Google Mail, maybe it's Outlook. And basically every time something changes in one of these sessions, if it gets assigned to a new room, gets assigned to a new date and time, um, that calendar is going to sync back with Hub so that that information always stays up to date. So it should be on your speaker's mail client so that they always have it with them no matter where they're going. But also make sure that um, there are easy ways for them to complete not only their session information, but also think about ways that you can streamline the process for asking for extra microphones or an extra table in the room. So look, look for things for session requests where you could list here's our standard AV set and either we're not accepting any uh, additional requirements at this time or we are and here's a list of questions. You also want to make it easy for them to manage their documents in terms of maybe they're uploading PowerPoints or they've got a white paper that they need to upload. So make sure that the system and tool that you're using is able to keep an edit log of who took what action, any comments, and be able to send that workflow back and forth between the session owner and the speaker. And then make it easy for the session owner to be able to approve that PowerPoint or that resource um, and then be able to publish it so that you end up with a final set of files.
Taking it back to that meeting planner uh, state of mind and support and how the product is built, um, I think having flexibility on the back end to make changes on the fly and having that agility is so incredibly important. Um, so everything I'm showing you right now is something that an administrator in terms of our meeting planning friends can do anytime they want. So look for systems and tools that have the flexibility. If you wanted to come in and add another session field or you wanted to add another um, AV request field, I always got frustrated when I would have to go back to someone to do that and then wait for it to be added to the to the database so that everyone could see it and then wait for it to be added to the API if they were needing to connect that information to the mobile app or somewhere else. So I would look for systems and platforms that give you the flexibility to add at any point in time um, and create that instantly in the database for anyone to look for as well as in the API. So, um, and again, look for that flexibility of different session types. So ultimately you as a meeting planner need the tools at your fingertips to be able to have the flexibility that you need. And then going back again to that meeting planner perspective, thinking about the things that help meeting planners. So for example, to be able to export all the session materials that have been accepted, you can go to one place to hit export session materials. And this is something that was like the pride and joy for so many years of when I was managing events, was this was a little checkbox that allowed us to use the session title for the file names. Because if I'm doing um, a, an event based on you know, pink cupcakes, everyone, every single speaker is gonna to upload a deck that says pink cupcakes draft pink cupcakes final and so I have no idea what session it's for so again going back to that meeting planner mindset and and easy tips and tricks that allow you to streamline your work by clicking a button you can use the session title for file names and then export all in one file so that you're able to have all of your final files so overall um, I would just suggest that, that ability uh, throughout your different processes of easy to use, allows you to take the control of um, the software and of any changes that you might have. Make sure that it feels and looks like your branding and that you've got the ability to be able to connect into any of the other marketing assets that you might have, whether it's your website, um, your mobile app, your digital signage, your badge scanning. Uh, really think about the API economy and how the technology is built and is ever evolving. Um, and I would suggest that you also talk to them about the contract, the customer success experience, and how they partner with you. Because in the meetings world, and actually in any world, I want to wake up every day and do business with people that I like and that I feel support me, understand my industry and my need. Um, and so look for those partners that really have that mentality uh, and think from a broad global perspective, like the Event Tech Tribe, where it's all technology, best in craft, but we believe in being an, an extended part of the, the meeting planners team. So that's a little bit today on content management, what it is, um, how you can best use it, a few tips and tricks through the process. Um, and then also a, a short little demo of Hub with some things to think about as you're evaluating your providers. So, Ramey, do we have any questions for today that, that we would like to answer during the webinar? Uh, we have one person want a little bit more information about the Event Tech Tribe, but it might be better for us to um, just respond to her afterwards, if that's okay. Okay, and it sounds like um, one of the questions is on the speaker profiles. Um, so here in, um, in speaker profiles, so again, thinking about easy ways for speakers to be able to come and update and upload information. So the speaker portal, um, being able to come and update, just like in Facebook, you've got a profile up in the upper right-hand side where speakers can upload any details. So again, this would carry through through the call for papers process. I would also look for the ability to upload individual individual resources for speakers as well. Um, so this is something where resources can be different for speakers than they are necessarily for your sessions. So again, looking for that flexibility so that uh, the, the tools that you're looking for meet the need of your business. All right. Well, thank you very, very much, everyone. If you do have any other questions, you can feel free to uh, ping me on Twitter, Ali Magyar, A-L-L-I-E-M-A-G-Y-A-R. Happy to always answer any questions, brainstorm with anyone, but really appreciate your time today. And I hope we were able to help you a little bit in terms of tips and tricks and what to think about when you're selecting your content management provider.
thanks very much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you everyone. And just a reminder, um, we did record this and we will be sending out the recording and the slides in a few days. Um, and also just a heads up, we have a pretty awesome webinar coming up in January also um, with Catherine Kastelak from Vox on creating user conferences. Um, so you won't want to miss that one. So thanks again, everyone, and have a great day.